Hello everyone, Anthrocheer of the Bloody Point. Uh, here's a big chunk, 15 minutes of a siege window, uh, unedited for the most part, showing the initial stages and then all throughout the first 15 minutes. I wanted to keep the comms in and comment on some of the related things uh, to clear up some, some misconceptions about Zergs and Crowfall and and how they work. So first thing to mention is, as you heard in the beginning, a report from someone uh, of an enemy force. Uh, on Siege Knights, generally speaking, the, the large three guilds, who, by the way, all pretty much can field the same, uh, same numbers. We're, we're all pretty much in the same ballpark in terms of our potential. Uh, each guild does not always siege that, either due to just membership activity or, or you know, operational need at the time, but we all can field uh, forces of a similar size. In any case, the, the thing about that is these large guilds, the alliances, do not usually have all of their numbers in the same location. On a, on a particular siege night, you may have three, four, five different keeps uh, going live at the same time that you have interest in, and in our case, at least, you are mixing offense and defense operations uh, in, in, the, uh, in the activity. So you are splitting up, essentially. In this particular case, as you just heard, uh, we had uh, an offensive force of about 30 uh, moving on an enemy held keep, which met a defense force of about 50, and, and that force uh, was wiped out, our, our force was wiped out there. So the, this, this is one of the things you have to consider when you're talking about Zergs. You know, I see a lot of comments by people who have or have not played the game just you know, using broad statements about Zerging. And at this level of, of play, and, and not every person is going to be able to or want to play at this level, you're talking about leading groups of 100, 150 people. Uh, and this is logistically complicated and in and itself is, is an area of gameplay. Doing that is, is a particular type of uh, gameplay and it's not something everybody can or wants to take part in. But it is, it is rewarding when, it's, um, when the challenge is met and when it's done successfully and, and it involves certain things such as splitting up chunks of a larger force. So you're not going to necessarily see 120, 150 people rolling around the map. You're going to see two, three groups of between 20, 30, and 50. So on this night, uh, ourselves, the Death Alliance, uh, the Hacks Alliance, and Winterblades Alliance are operating in multiple maps at the same time, uh, splitting up their forces in various ways. But there, there is generally, in this particular case, a force of you know 30, 20 to 30 doing a defensive operation. And then you have a larger force doing offense, or the reverse in the case of Winterblades. So here we have uh, our primary objective, which is why we have most of our forces here. Uh, this is a, an assault on a hacks held keep. We are facing a, a much smaller defensive force. So, you know, uh, looking at this, someone might think, well, we're zerging this, this keep, we're zerging a smaller force. Why did we have to bring so many people? One of the reasons is because it's a primary objective, you want to assure success. So you bring as many as you can. Second, you don't necessarily know who's going to be here, how many other forces are operating in the area. Again, that's one of the logistical challenges, is collecting that intel, uh, using scouts to do that, being aware of where the other forces are, keeping track of everything, planning ahead, etc. So, again, people will comment about zerging or, or not understanding why do you have to play a game with this many people. It's because you are doing multiple things at once. There are actually five keeps that are in play that multiple forces are working on here. And you'll see the messages pop up throughout the video. So as, as we're doing this, Winterblades is defending their keep at Zoltrix. And there's a hacks force on an offense right now. We are uh, just about to defeat the defenders here. Again, we have overwhelming numbers. We're gonna clean this up as quickly as we can secure the objective and then uh, go from there depending on what we hear is happening elsewhere. We do have another keep that is defending right now. Uh, we have people there keeping an eye on that activity. There is a small assault uh, taking place or a feint of an assault at that keep which is being dealt with. 
you know, as, as a raid leader on a, on a night of sieges, you have to make decisions both before the action begins and during on where to uh, relocate your forces, uh, how, to, how to play that. You know, uh, another factor is the game mechanics. You can recall forces to locations, but you have to have previously bound there, so you have to plan ahead for that. Uh, you have to deal with uh, zone changes, so going through rune gates and the delay in that, uh, possible population caps, and then, as you're going to see uh, shortly in this video, when recalling, you will also, in some cases, have to deal with load times. So even if you plan for X or Y deployment, uh, how it plays out varies based on the game mechanics and what's actually going on. So it's, 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 it's logistically complicated. It's a whole thing in the game, aside from everything else. Um, guilds do this, the large guilds, to greater or lesser effect. Some are better than others. Some nights, you know, a certain factor will come into play. You know, we've had issues where people are crashing, uh, you know, whole zones will go down, you'll hit a pop cap, so you can't even get your forces into a zone. These, these are just uh, some of the costs of doing business at this scale. So as you can see, we are cleaning up the wards. Uh, when sieging, you have to destroy the four wards. You can see the little icons in the top center on the left side. Uh, you can notice that the health bars are all pretty much going down at the same time. We're really well synced here on this operation, I gotta say. I was very proud to see that. Once these wards are down, we can attack the tree. Now, we have word throughout this part of the engagement once we breach the walls of a hostile force, uh, the Winterblades force, probably 50 strong, headed here. Uh, this may have turned out to be incorrect. You know, the, the fog of war is, is a real thing in Crowfall. Uh, you don't necessarily know what's happening, and sometimes your intel is bad. There's some confusion. Uh, there could be even, you know, misdirection on the part of the enemy. They enter a zone, making you think they're going there, but they go somewhere else. So we're keeping our forces here, uh, defending this capture at this breach point because we believe a force is incoming. If that were not the case, we would leave a smaller force and send some people back. But again, you have to make decisions based on the information you had. So hopefully this is of interest to people who have no experience with sieges at the scale of Crowfall or who do and just want to see the thought process. You know, decisions are being made uh, based on information and some of that information is incorrect, uh, some of it's incomplete. Some of it might even not be heard, um, but yeah, that's how it is. Uh, communications, comms in, in these operations are pretty complex, and uh, I don't think uh, we quite have it perfect, but we do a pretty decent job. So we're, we're about to put the seed down here and secure the capture of this keep. Once we plant the seed, we no longer have to stay here. The, the keep becomes invulnerable to attack, and we could recall and return to our primary defense target, which is currently under attack. There are trebs uh, placed and firing now. They're going to work on breaching the walls. Um, this is a, a crucial nexus and a really important point in this, in this phase of the, of the siege night. If the attackers were to do a particular thing, I won't even mention it, but if they did, it would be a problem. So we're kind of on pins and needles at this point. Uh, that will only increase once we uh, begin the recall process and are stuck staring at a loading screen. That's coming up shortly. I've left that in in its entirety so people can actually see how long it really took. You know, uh, one thing that happens in this community is you say X or Y and um, without any proof to back it up, people will question it or the reverse happens. So I'm providing the proof in a moment. But yes, yeah, so we have successfully uh, achieved our primary objective our offense objective, which was to take this key from Hex, which we did. Uh, we are planted, as you heard. You can see the, uh, the timer on the Tree of Life in the distance there in a moment. That's a call now for everybody to recall. We can safely leave. We need to head back to our keep and secure the defense. As I mentioned earlier, the walls are breached, so we got to make this quick. Uh, interestingly, I am going to get tagged here on the way out. Keeping me here would have been a, a big nightmare, so I was probably uh, not cautious enough. I should have went to the group and recalled in a cluster, but I got lucky there. Okay, so now, looking at the timestamp, it's 9.52, and trying to enter the zone. This is a lot of time to be away from the, the defense or to be stuck in a loading screen. 
there are reasons for this, which we're aware of, but it really should not be the case, and it's one of the many issues the game faces currently. You can have a, a whole operation, um, you know, ruined by this particular artifact of the game's technical side. It's, it's a big problem. Uh, I don't know if it's something that'll be addressed going forward, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, it does influence decision making. You know, sometimes you'll decide, well, do I want to use a temple respawn or do I take one in the field at my objective? And you have to factor in the loading times going through the gates. You know, these are things that you have to consider. So, again, agonizing wait, looking at the screen, getting reports of what's going on at the other location. Um, you know, in some cases, getting to a location a minute or two earlier is a huge difference. It can mean the difference between losing and gaining a keep. It can also mean you can liberate your forces earlier and send them to a third objective, which was the case here. Uh, we could have potentially gotten on site to another location in time, but uh, that did not happen. I mean, look at this. This is, this is a long time. So the call for, for our, our defensive target's walls being breached, you just heard, happened while most of our forces were staring at this screen. That's terrible. Well, I'm just going to give a, a moment of silence here. Twenty twenty one, ladies and gentlemen. Almost three minutes to recall from one zone to another during a siege. We've entirely assaulted and sacked a keep, defended keep in three minutes. Less than three. So we were quite lucky here that we were facing who we were facing and not facing ourselves. Okay, we're in. Walls are breached. They, we got here just in time. You know, if they had a pushed in and taken that respawn, preventing a recall, that would have been a huge problem, and a lot of us would have been furious. Fortunately, that was not the case. The uh, the force strength of this enemy uh, group here is not terribly high. It's a small group compared to us, so this is not really a problem once we're all here. Their other group, as I understand it, is in transit at this point. We will encounter them later, uh, right after this actually. But yes, we're pretty safe. Uh, th th there's not really much danger of losing this keep at this point, but we are burning time because we do have another keep vulnerable. Or we did, rather, but there's another keep elsewhere that we have interest in. Again, there are multiple guilds involved in this siege night. They have split their forces into multiple groups, so there's a lot of pieces on the board, a lot of movement. But we have to get this done first before we can go elsewhere. They're still firing on the walls, you can see, making new holes. But this is really just a matter of time. We're just waiting for a coordinated push from another group of ours. One of the things that we like to do is multi-prong attacks. You've probably seen it in some of the other videos, and this is no exception. We are now establishing a beachhead here at the base of the hill, getting confirmation of the other group's status, and now we're pushing. And that is going to be uh, all she wrote here shortly. So I hope you enjoyed somewhat of a breakdown of how these large siege nights play out. There was a lot I didn't mention, of course, for pretty obvious reasons. You don't want to give away all your secrets. And there's some information that uh, is yet to happen because this night isn't over with this defense. But that was this siege. Thanks for watching as always. The game uh, has some challenges that it's facing, but hopefully it'll get cleaned up going forward. And hope you are enjoying Crowfall.